that's nice. Hopefully. All right. Good afternoon, Mr. Sowards. Do you have a matter that is ready to go? Yes, Your Honor. Provided you could hear me, I think this is my first Zoom with the Battleground Court. We can hear you. Okay. I have Mr. Caltagrone here. Uh, it's just mostly getting a waiver of speedy trial in and a new date. I am just retained. Okay. Sounds good. He, he is there with you in your office, Mr. Sowards? Yes. If the court will watch your screen, there is oh, Mr. Yep. Caltagrone. There he is. I do recall him. Mr. Caltigarone, can I have you just state your name and date of birth, please, for the record? Certainly. Paul Caltigarone, April 30th, 1956. All right, Mr. Caltigarone. From uh, what Mr. Sowards has stated, it sounds to me like you are going to be entering a waiver of speedy trial. I do see that here in the court file. Were you able to talk to Mr. Sowards about your right to a speedy trial? Yes, I was, Your Honor. And you understand that doing a waiver commencing June 30th, 2023 gives the city of Battleground 90 days from that date to bring you to trial. Are you in agreement with that? I am, Your Honor. All right, I will accept the waiver. I'll find it knowing, intelligent, and voluntarily made.
Mr. Sowards, what is the proposed court date forward the defense is asking for? I would yield to the prosecutor whenever she has the time. We'll be speaking over the next week. So something about 30 days out would be no objection. Okay. Um, so Ms. Carmi, uh, how about having this matter back? Does May 4th work for yourself and your client, Mr. Sowards? Um, near my anniversary, either one week prior or one week later will keep me in less trouble. All right, sounds good. All right, how about we set this with Ms. Carmi's permission to May 11th? That that, that that no works. objection. All right, that's the day before my wife's birthday, so everyone can remind me on that day <laughs> that my wife's birthday is the next day. So we'll, we're going to watch each other's backs. So, Mr. Caltigarone, your next court date is going to be May 11th, 2023, and that is going to be at 1.30 p.m. That is a mandatory court date, sir, meaning if you fail to appear at that time, a warrant for your arrest could be issued. Uh, release conditions, including the no contact with Walmart, will remain in place. Understood. Generally, sir, we're going to be sending you your information uh, in the mail. Are you still on Allworth Road and Battleground, sir? That is correct. Okay, we will send the documentation there. If there's nothing further, have a good day, and that documentation will arrive in the mail. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Carney. Thank you. Thank you both. Take care. I see Mr. Lawhon is with us on Zoom. Mr. Lawhon, do you have a matter ready? Good afternoon, Your Honor. Uh, yes, I have uh, Lisa Shire. Okay. Maybe on Shire. Zoom. She may be in person. She's switching. Oh, I do see her in, on Zoom. Let me bring her in. And Mr. Lahan, just to um, make sure, are you are we entering the plea today? No, no I need uh, a couple of weeks set over. Oh, okay. I won't yes. pass the paperwork then. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you. There's just one more thing that Ms. Shire uh, needs me to check on. So no a problem. couple of weeks set over is all that's required. Good afternoon, Ms. Shire. Can you hear the court, ma'am? Yes, I know. I know I can. Okay, can I have you state your name and date of birth, please, for the record? Lisa Shire, 11 16, 1973. Thank you, Ms. Shire. We are joined with your attorney, Mr. Lahan, on Zoom. Mr. Lahan, how is Ms. Shire asking to proceed? Your Honor, um, we just need a couple of weeks set over. There's just one more thing that I need to look into for Ms. Shire's case, and then I think we're going to be able to resolve. Okay. I was just taking a look at where we are on speedy trial right now. Give me just a moment. That it commenced March 2nd. Okay. So I'm assuming from your language, Mr. Lahan, maybe a three-week set over would be sufficient? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Any objection to a three-week set over without a new waiver, Ms. Carmi? No, Your Honor. Okay. So Ms. Shire, we're gonna set this matter out about three weeks. It sounds like uh, perhaps you are nearing resolution on this matter. Uh, we are not based on the previous waiver at the beginning of March, gonna be entering a new waiver of speedy trial at this time. So simply we're gonna be assigning just that future court date. Uh, by my calendar, it looks to me like we would schedule that on the 20th of April. Does that work with the parties? Yes, sure. Yes, it does. Okay. So, Ms. Shire, your next court date is going to be on April 20th, 2023. That's going to be at 1.30 p.m. Just like this court date, that will continue to be a mandatory court date. Um, is there anything further on Ms. Shire's matter at this time? No, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Okay. Release conditions that have been previously imposed on this case will remain in place. Um, and Ms. Shire, we'll see you back here on the 20th at 1.30, okay? Thank you, yes. Thank you, ma'am. Have a good day. Thank you, Mr. Lahan. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a great day. I see Ms. Townsend. Ms. Townsend, do you have a matter ready? Yes, I do. 
Uh, this is just a review on Mr. Kangas um, on his check-in for his community service, which he's done, I believe, 12 hours of. All right, let me bring Mr. Kangas in right now. Grab his file. <clears throat> Mr. Kangas, if I could have you unmute, sir, and turn your camera on, please. Thank you, sir. And for the record, can you state your name and date of birth, please? Will Kangas, 2006, 17, 2005, or no, 17, sorry, I forgot, 06, 17, 2005. All right, Mr. Kangas. Uh, we do have your attorney, Ms. Townsend, that is joining us via Zoom. Um, I did have an opportunity to review Mr. Kangas's file yesterday. And maybe you can correct me. So I have Mr. Kangas having been ordered back in December, 32 hours of community service and defensive driving level two. At this time, I don't have any documentation for any of those components. Uh, do you have any uh, additional information for the court, Ms. Townsend? Yes, I know that my client has taken the course. And he just advised me today that he's done 12 hours of his community service with a local church. I asked him if he filed the certificate from the church. He said no. Um, and so I told him that he needs to get that into the court or to me right away so we can get it filed under his case number. And Mr. Kangas, just to make sure, you also did do the defensive driving level two? Yes. Can you forward that completion certificate to the court as well, sir? Yes. Okay. All right. So at this time, I think that we have about 20 hours of community service remaining. Uh, Mr. Kangas will be providing the defensive driving level two proof to the court, hopefully via email today. Ms. Townsend could perhaps assist him with that. Um, the court right now is going to be setting this matter out about two months to the 25th of May. Does that work with your calendar, Ms. Townsend? Yes, Your Honor. All right. So, Mr. Kangas, we're going to have you back on May 25th. And at that time, we'll be assessing whether or not you have gotten that community service completed. OK. OK. Certainly, if you've completed the community service and that documentation is to our court, we can strike that court date. So maybe a little of incentive to get that done. We're going to be sending you out some documentation, sir, through the mail. Are you still on 169th Street in Brush Prairie? Yes, sir. Okay, we'll be sending the documentation there. Anything further on Mr. Kangas's case, Ms. Townsend? No, thank you, Your Honor. Okay, thank you both. You may log out. I just um, saved Mr. Kangas's file. If you want to print that one uh, for me to sign, please. Ms. Nigro, do you have a matter ready? I do. It is um, Jordan Smith, and he should okay. be appearing by Zoom. All right. All right. Mr. Smith is coming in. Mr. Smith, if I could have you take yourself off of mute, sir, and turn your camera on, please. Jordan Smith, if I could have you take yourself off of mute, sir, and turn your camera on, please. Jordan, you need to tap the screen and then you need to unmute the microphone and unclick your video. Your Honor, I can call him. He was having difficulty because his computer did not have a microphone, so he just downloaded Zoom onto his phone. So if you want to take another matter, I can give him a call. Okay, sounds good, Ms. Negro. Thank you. And I see Mr. Foley's bookcase, but I don't see Mr. Foley. Oh, there's Mr. Foley. And Mr. Foley, you are muted. Now you're not. Which matter are you here on, sir? Uh, Chris Manu. Um, M uh, 
M-A-U-N-U. I don't know if he shows in the waiting room, Your Honor. Um, he does not show in. The, oh, he is here, present in court. Come on up, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Right up to the rostrum, if you don't mind. And when you get up here, if I could have you just state your name and date of birth, please, for the record. Uh, Christopher Manu, uh, 8 1980 Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Manu, you are uh, have your attorney, Mr. Foley, who is present with us on Zoom. Go ahead, Mr. Foley. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I, I haven't had an opportunity to really discuss in detail the, the case with Ms. Carmi, so uh, I'd be asking for a, a little bit more time to uh, to do that, and hopefully we can come to a, a resolution on it. I know there were some uh, hiccups uh, getting this thing to where it is now, but Mr. Manu is, is in compliance and um, is doing well, so um, I think another 60 to 90 days would be, I think, plenty of time for us to get a chance to talk. And have you had the opportunity to talk to Mr. Manu about his right to a speedy trial? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Manu, um, I have no doubt that Mr. Foley hasn't talked to you about your right to speedy trial, but simply to set the case out about three months, we would generally do a waiver of your right to speedy trial. You have 90 days from the first time you appear in court or 90 days from the last time you did a waiver. Generally, it's this court's preference to do a commencement or a beginning date for those 90 days on the day that you return to court. So first of all, do you have any questions about your right to a speedy trial? No, nope. no, Your Honor. Okay. So let's first determine what date Mr. Foley is asking that you return, and then we'll figure out the date for that speedy trial. So go ahead, Mr. Foley, regarding your calendar. Thank you, Your Honor. So ideally, I guess sometimes towards the end of May, the first part of June. So there's looks like there's a 25th, uh, or I'm sorry, a 29th date in June and a sixth date in, uh, no, I'm sorry, 25th day in, in May and then an eighth in uh, June. Okay. So either one of those would work. Ms. Carmi, any objection to the set over in this matter? No, Your Honor. And yeah, because of the hiccups, we have not had a chance to connect as fully as we need to. So I understand the need for this continuance. So Mr. Manu, we have a couple of May, a May date proposed by your attorney of May 25th. We also have a June date proposed. I think that was June 8th. We also have June 1st as well, if we want to split the difference. Would June 1st work for your calendar, Mr. Foley? Um, I, I think so, Your Honor. I, I, it looks like I have one matter, but I think I can clear that. Okay. I, I don't I don't want to create a conflict, so let's do June 8th. Does that work with you, Mr. Manu? Yes, it does, Your Honor. And Mr. Foley, June 8th? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Carmi? Yes, it does. <laughs> all right. All the way around the horn. All right. So, Mr. Manu, your next court date is going to be June 8th, 2023, and that's going to be at 1.30 p.m. That is a mandatory court date. If you fail to appear at that time, a warrant for your arrest could be issued. Um, the release conditions the court has previously put in place, including the administrative release condition with interlock, will remain in place. Uh, the last thing that we are going to be doing is that waiver of speedy trial. So give me just a moment to have that document filled out. And Tom, I'll reach out to you next week and we can chat more. That'd be great. Thank you. All right. And Mr. Manu, just to make sure you were um, on board with commencing or beginning that speedy trial on June 8th, 2023. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor. Do you have any questions for the court or for your attorney about that right to speedy trial? No, I do not, Your Honor. Okay. I'm going to accept the waiver. I'll find it knowing, intelligent, and voluntarily made. Mr. Manu's next court date is that same date, June 8th, 2023 at 1 30. And if there's nothing further on the case, we will see the parties back at that time. We'll get you some documents, Mr. Manu, over by the door. Once you have them, you are free to go. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Yep. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Carney. Thank you. All right, Ms. Nigro, it looks like we've gotten Mr. Smith off of mute. Yes, Your Honor. Is Could the court confirm his identity by possibly the date of birth? He, I've walked him through settings, and for some reason, camera options not coming up as an option on his Zoom right now. I'm not quite sure why. 
Mr. Smith, can I have you state your name and date of birth, please, for the record? Okay. Mr. Smith, can you hear the court, sir? It's one of those days, Ms. Nigro. I'll be back. Okay. All right. Thank sounds you. good. Cole Violet. One up. Can you get up here, sir? You can state your name and date of birth, please, for the record. Cole Violet, 8785. Sounds good. You were one of my group that I looked at yesterday that was doing real well, so I'm going to try to get those folks out of here first. Uh, so, Mr. Violet, it looks to me like you have 90 or 10 days of work through completed. You have a DV evaluation on file, and you've just started treatment at a Better Way Counseling. Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. That's good. <laughs> That's you. what we're asking for. So, I am going to have you back on June 22nd, 2023. Okay. Please make sure that a Better Way Counseling has an update for us by that time. Yes, Your Honor. But other than that, I think you are in full compliance. Keep up the good work. That is ready to print, Madam Clerks, when you have the chance. I'm going to get you a document with that return date on it. Once you have it, you are free to go. Thank, Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Fink, can I have you please uh, turn your camera on, please, sir? Yes, give me one. There we go. There we go. Thank you, sir. Can I have you state your name and date of birth, please, for the record? Jonathan Fink, 92586. Thank you, Mr. Fink. Trying to get some people called that I found was in, were in compliance. So let me just get your paperwork pulled up here real quick. I see that you have been, uh, I know you've had some challenges. I know that sometimes I've seen you in a hospital before, so it's great to not see you in a hospital. Yeah, I was there looks like you have had the opportunity to do some of your work crew. So well done on that as well. Yeah, I'm trying. I've been in the hospital six days this week, so. Oh, no. Well, do the best you can. I'm, I'm finding that you are in compliance. Uh, just again, continue to do the best you can and we'll hopefully get this work crew almost finished. It looks like just two days remaining, huh? Yes, I should have that done by the next uh, All right, day. Mr. Fink. Well, we're gonna send you some paperwork. Are you still getting your mail on 19th Street in Vancouver? Yes, sir. All right, we'll send the paperwork there. Stay in touch with Devin and uh, yeah, keep up the good work. Honor, All right, thank you. Yeah, we're going to do, we're doing just one thing at a time with Mr. Fink, but he's doing good. A theft class as well, John, at some point, but let's just uh, get you healthy and get your work crew going, okay? Thank you. Thanks, John. Take care. You too. All right. And his, thank you, Ms. Travers, by the way. I wasn't trying to diminish what you were saying. I completely no, agree. No, I just didn't know if we needed to do a new referral for it. No, nah, we're, if we can, let's do that. That's a good idea, but I wasn't going to. Okay. He's the fact he's doing his work through is I'm good with that. And that's ready to print when you're ready to. Perfect. All right. I see Mr. Gonzalez. Mr. Gonzalez, can you hear the court, sir? Yes, sir. Now I can. Wonderful. Can you state your name and date of birth, please, for the record? Wilfredo Gonzalez Quevedo, uh, March 19, 1989. Okay. And sir, I also found that you were one of our folks that were doing a really good job. So I'm going to try to get you out of here fairly quickly as well. Thank you. Looks to me like um, you got 10 or 15 days of work through completed. Looks like you're almost finished with your DV treatment. It looks like maybe just a final I, assignment with them or, or are I, you finished? I, I'm done. I, I was done on Tuesday, sir. Okay. So we're in the we're in the home stretch of a lot of your lot of your work. Um, I am going to find you in compliance on all your conditions. We're going to set this matter out to June 22nd, 2023. And I'm going to be mailing you out some notice. Are you still getting your mail at the address on 10th Avenue in Richfield? Yes, sir. All right. We're going to send the paperwork there. 
I'm just closing out of this document, Madam Clerk. And uh, Mr. Gonzalez, have a good day. Good luck with the rest of your work crew and we'll get this taken care of, okay, sir? You as well. And um, by the way, Zoom is having issues because some update. So you're gonna have issues with a lot of the people today. They mm. just need to go to the bottom and activate Wi-Fi or data calling. And that's it. I had the same issue. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you for that information. Okay. By the Thanks, way. Mr. Bye. Gonzalez. Good luck, sir. You too. All right. Mr. Roundsley, can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Can I have you just state your name and date of birth, please, for the record? Gideon Roundsley, 11 16 2000. Wonderful. Mr. Roundsley, you were also in the group of folks that were in compliance. So let me just get your paperwork pulled up here real quick. Um, looks to me like you were last in court in January. You were reassigned to work crew, substance abuse evalu and vic evaluation of victims panel as last chance. You completed three of your five days of work crew, evaluation, and eight hour class. It looks like we're just waiting on that proof of victims panel. Is that on its way towards us? Oh, yes. no. Yeah, you should have it. And I, I do see have it here. five work crew as of today, this morning. Yeah, I was going to say, sometimes I like to see, sometimes this stuff arrives right in the last minute. It's a good surprise when that happens. So let me just amend that on your form here real quick. So give me just a sec. So it looks like, Mr. Roundsley, just the last two days of victims of uh, work crew, is that correct? Uh, just one one day. Okay. I, morning. I didn't get an updated sheet. So did you do it in the last couple of days? I had work crew today. I had, I had oh, it you did today. Okay, that makes sense then. So and I'm going to set this out. Do you think you're going to have that last day of work crew completed in the next month? I am scheduled for this Saturday. Yes. Wonderful. So I'm going to set this out just one month. And certainly if you complete, uh, that final court date can be stricken, okay? Sounds good. Thank you. No problem. So, Mr. Roundsley, I'm going to schedule you for the 27th of April at 1.30. I'll send you out notice for that. But again, if everything's done, we should be good to go. Uh, still getting your mail at the address on 122nd Avenue in uh, Battleground? Yes, sir. All right. We'll send the paperwork there. Keep up the good work, sir. Thank you. All right. Take care. I see Holland Martin on Zoom. Holland, can I have you unmute and turn your camera on, please? Hello. Hello, how are you? Uh, really stressful. Really oh, stressed is out. Zoom stressing you out today, Holland? Uh, yeah, it, it was my first time. I was going to say, I've almost always seen you in court. It was surprising not to see you today. Yeah, I'm out of town. That's totally fine, Holland. Well, I'm sorry this was stressful, but I'm glad you showed up. It looks to me like we've got your evaluation and treatment plan from Columbia Treatment, so you're doing awesome. I appreciate you getting that to us. I know that's not easy. Oh my gosh, I was so stressed out. I called the front desk and I was like, oh no, because I was like, uh, some lady said, it's not compliance report. And so I was like, I called no, Columbia River. <laughs> I would say it's fine. It's as close as we're going to get right now. I don't very seldom do I actually get a treatment plan from Columbia a River Mental Health. So it is uh, it is just fine, Holland. I know that you're doing everything you can. So I appreciate that. Um, I'm not going to see you. you back here till June. So you might be back here in person next time. But we'll yes, see you back definitely. here on the 22nd of June. I'm going to mail All you right. out some pa paperwork. Are you still getting your mail at the address on, um, oh, sorry, the P.O. Box 1572? Yeah, P.O. Box 1572. All right, Holland, I'll send the paperwork there. Thank you for your work and getting all that paperwork to us. And good job on Zoom, my friend. Thank you. All right, take care. Have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye. Right. Mark Popoff, I know, is with us in the audience. Come on up, Mark. How are you doing, Mark? Better now that I'm here. You, you you did our you have our work crew world record, my friend. That's the most since I became judge a year and three months ago. Thirty days of work crew, well done. Thank you. There's people that tell us they can't do three days of work crew, Mark, and I I'm point at you and say, Mark did thirty days. That, all right. <laughs> well, I am really uh, really pleased, Mark, with how much you did. Um, I know that. 
city attorney, Ms. Carmi, I think she must feel the same way because we just don't see this very often in many of our cases. So again, well done. I'm just gonna get your paperwork pulled up. I think we were still waiting on some mental health stuff. Does that seem right with you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, looks like we're also, you completed your aggression control workshop, so great. Um, where are we on the mental health stuff right now? Yesterday, I spent all day working on it. I okay. went over to my lawyer, um, his name is Rob Anderson. Mm -hmm. He gave me a little paper, it said Mike Schultz on it. Okay. And uh, I called him and we talked and then he sent me like six tests to take. Okay. And so I took them all and I got them all completed. I got them all sent back to him. Okay. So, so we're just going to wait to see what they say then, huh? Yeah. Okay. Well, Mark, you've done everything we've asked, so I have no reason to think you're not going to do it this time. I'm going to set this out two months just to make sure we're, we're keeping good track on the mental health work that you're doing. Um, I'm going to have you come back, Mark, on May 25th. Does that work for you? Yeah. And any paperwork that you get, if you're starting treatment at all, if you could just send that our direction, it'd be really appreciated, okay? Awesome. All right. We're going to get you some paperwork over by the door, Mark. Once you have that paperwork, you're free to go. Thanks for doing such a good job. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. All right. We lost Mr. Smith. Is he in the waiting room again? Do you believe he said he was in the waiting room? So he was named before, unless he changed devices, Ms. Nigro. I just have two unnamed devices in our waiting room. I'm more than fine with bringing them in to see. Do you want me to do that? That would be great. Okay. I think our tight, our, our luck is going to change, Ms. Nigro. I think that this is heading in our direction. We're just going to see, hopefully, is one of these people. It would be the iPhone. Okay. All right, so I have brought in an iPhone 3 that I just see is unmuted. Can you tell me who this is? Jordan Smith. All right. Ms. Nigro, I knew things would turn around for us. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, no, no. It's totally fine. It happens from time to time. Can you uh, tell me uh, your date of birth, Mr. Smith? Yes, it's 9-12-68. All right. Thank you, sir. Ms. Nigro is here on behalf of Mr. McAleer. Go ahead, Ms. Nigro. Uh, Your Honor, it looks like we've reached a resolution in this matter. Uh, my client's going to be entering a stay of proceedings. Uh, Ms. Carmi and I need a couple weeks to get the paperwork finished. So if we could set this out for a couple weeks. Okay. So it looks to me like um, Mr. Smith, is, his commencement date for speedy trial was the 16th of February. Um, so even if we set it out a couple of weeks, it looks like it will still be 60 days elapsed. Are you comfortable with that, Ms. Permi? Yes, I am, Your Honor. Okay, so Ms. Nigro, within that time frame, it looks to me like, could we do this on April 13th? That would work. Okay. Mr. Smith, does it work for you to have your next court appearance on April 13th at, at uh, 1.30 p.m.? Yes, it does. All right. So the next court appearance is going to be April 13th, 2023 at 1.30 p.m. That is a mandatory court date, sir. You can choose to appear on Zoom. Because we need functionality of a camera in particular for entering a stay, it may be best for you to come to court um, just to let yeah. you know that, okay? Okay. I, probably, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Okay. We're going to be sending you some paperwork. Are you still getting your mail on 219th Street in Richfield? Yes, I am. Sounds good. We'll send the information there. Anything further, Ms. Nigro? No, Your Honor. Thank you. All righty. Have a good day. You too. And Jordan, you can hang up now and disconnect. Oh, we'll slow there, Hector. Thank you. Okay. All right, and I brought in someone else who is Stratus C5 Elite. Can you tell me your name, ma'am? Is she connected to audio, do we know? 
Can we uh, message her, Madam Clerks, to identify her and figure out if we can get her connected? Chad Sizemore. Good afternoon, Mr. Sizemore. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Um, can I have you state your name and date of birth, please, for the record? Chad Sizemore, January 8th, 1994. All right, Mr. Sizemore, I'm just getting your paperwork pulled up here. Um, so it looks like we're in a little bit of a holding pattern. It looks like still waiting on um, that mental health evaluation. We'd asked for that back in uh, February. Can you tell me a little bit about that? So I was able to get the mental health evaluation completed. Nice. Um, I'm waiting for it to arrive in the mail. I request that they send it to both myself and to the court. Okay. Just that way there's a little bit of extra. Um, I do have a letter from the individual that gave me the assessment. Okay, can you approach with that so I can take a look at it? Yes, I can, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Are you comfortable with this staying in the file or would you like to keep this letter? I am comfortable with that staying in the file, Your Honor. Okay. Um, because this is a um, medical diagnosis, I'm not going to read it, Ms. Carmi, but I am letting you know that it does show that the mental health evaluation has been completed, and it looks like there is some manner of tentative diagnosis, but it looks like there's no treatment plan yet. Understood. Thank okay. you. So I'm just going to modify this slightly, Mr. Sizemore, because... Did they give you a sense about the time frame for the next steps on the case? Your Honor, uh, they informed me that there's a few different treatment options that I could go through. Mm -hmm. uh, the earliest one appears to be potentially next month, mm -hmm. and it's the 10-week program. It's a kind of group program, mm -hmm. and I was going to try to get into that one and then afterwards try to get a specialist who would be willing to work with me. Okay. Sounds good. So let's set this out two months, just so we're in a more appropriate time frame for having some documentation. I will tell you, and I think you did the exact right move, which is Columbia River Mental Health is very challenging in regards to treatment. So anything that you can physically be bringing with you into court is, is just a real good safety net, just because it's really hard sometimes to get paperwork from them. I understand, Your Honor, and I kind of Kind of observed that the last couple of times I was here. Yeah, I was so going to say, I think you've probably been here for some of our challenges with the paperwork. So I appreciate yes. that. Uh, so let's set this out to the May date, Mr. Sizemore. Um, would the 25th of May work for you? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Carmi, any objection to sitting it over to May 25th? No objection. Thank you. All right. Sounds good. So we're going to get you some paperwork, Mr. Sizemore, having you back on the 25th of May. I appreciate you taking these steps. I know we had some conversations last time about the things that financially we could and couldn't do. I appreciate you doing the things that you can do. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. We'll get some paperwork by the door. Once you have it, you're free to go. Thank you. Thank you. You have a good day. So I can form for that. That's ready to print, Madam Clerks, when you're ready. Miguel Leon. All right, sir, can I have you state your name and date of birth, please, for the record? Uh, Miguel Leon, uh, August 23rd, 97. Mr. Leon, I remember your case has been in the weeds for a long time. Yeah. We assigned you 24 hours of community service in 2020. Did you do any? No, not yet, no. Can you tell me why? Um, I actually had another case in uh, Vancouver. I totally spaced this one. And so just recently when uh, I went to go purchase some stuff and popped up. Here's what we're gonna do. Because this case is so old, um, I'm not inclined to do community service anymore. Okay. And the simple reason for that is that it was something we were doing during COVID because work crew was shut down. Right, right. So I can either give you three days of work crew that you do here in Battleground or one day of jail in Skamania. 
And I assume I know what you're going to answer, but I'll give you the option to answer. Yeah, let's do the work through. <laughs> okay, I would have, that was my assumption. So Devin, our work crew chief is here today. Okay. So um, there is one of the custody officers, or security officers over by the area where you checked in. Mm -hmm. You should be able to let him know and he will get you in touch with Devin to get signed up for the work crew. Sweet. You're required to do work crew at least once every 30 days. So please don't let it go very long. Please be diligent with your work crew. I'm just making a quick note here in the file. We're going to set a review date two months out. I think that's sufficient time to have you get this all completed, okay? Okay. Certainly, if you get completed before then, that court date can be canceled. But the next court date is going to be May 25th, 2023 at 1 30 p.m., okay? okay? So if I complete all the uh, work crew by then? If you complete the three days of work crew by then in 60 days, I think you can do it. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Can I ask you about your shirt? Uh, it's a it's a brand from one of my favorite uh, artists. Oh, really? Music artists, yeah. I like cookies. <laughs> it's on the shorts too. Yeah. I've noticed on nice. The shirt. Oh. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see. Paperwork over by the door. Good luck, sir. I mean, if you're gonna put something out in the world, cookies. I mean, I'm not. <laughs> What's wrong with that? I'm not gonna go too far down that road. I'm not sure. All right. I see Mr. Carrasco here on Zoom. Mr. Carrasco, do you have a matter ready? Yes, sir. And I have a couple. I have a Molly Maggio. Okay. And uh, she's not appearing today. I understand this will be a dismissal. You understanding what? It will be a dismissal. Oh, a dismissal. Okay. Yeah. Both of Mr. Carrasco's matter. Apparently, it's his lucky day, but both of those files should have dismissals without prejudice in them. Who's your other matter, Mr. Carrasco? Leonardo Gutierrez. All right. All right. So let's do Ms. Maggio first. This is Molly Maggio, 3A0042803. Uh, dismissal being entered without prejudice in the interest of justice. I'm assuming no objection, Mr. Carrasco. Correct. All right, I have signed off on that order of dismissal. Uh, we're going to mail this to Ms. Maggio. Do you know if she's still on Hazeldell Avenue? I'm not sure, Your Honor. I could also email her for the copy of the court. So. Okay, sounds good. We'll try to get that to her. And, and Your, Your Honor, Honor there was a uh, NCO in that case, um, pre-trial, and we have notified the victim of the dismissal, um, and I believe but the court can correct me if my, I'm wrong. You will want an order terminating that no contact order, even though we have the dismissal. Yeah, if we can get a standalone, okay. I'll sign off I'll on that it. right now. Okay. And then I also have Leonardo Gutierrez, 2A07309963. Uh, Mr. Gutierrez, also a dismissal without prejudice in the interest of justice and additional investigation. I'm assuming, again, no objection, Mr. Carrasco? That's correct, John. All right, signed off on this. We have a mailing address for Mr. Gutierrez on Olympia Drive. We'll mail it there, and then certainly you can email it to your client as well, okay? Great. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Carrasco. Have a good day. Your Honor, thank you, Ms. Carmen. Thank you. Was Mr. McMullen going to be appearing today? He is. He's going to be closer to 2.30 because of another docket. All right. So Ms. Wilson, his client, is in the waiting room. I'm not. I believe that he let her know. Okay. Um, it, that's my understanding anyway. Okay. Let me just get a list of our remaining people that are here present in the courtroom. Were you able to commute? Okay. Yes. Can the phone number for that? Um, oh, sure. Um, it's Tiki Garcia is on as the Stratus G5, but oh, okay. we've been try, going back and forth trying to get her, but if I can get the phone number, I'll just have her call that phone. How about I just call her? Oh, okay. Right? Does that work? Sure. Do you have a phone number for her? Okay, sounds good. And may I approach with the order terminating? Yes. Thank you very much. Mm.
So this is an image We're working on getting Ms. Garcia. And then ma'am, what's your name? Okay. And I think we were waiting to get a public defender available to potentially speak to you. But Grant, I would be waiting on a flat fee, and because uh, my new starter was very happy about it, sure. we'll have to go over the budget, so I get that to off. Okay. So I, um, due to COVID, um, in my mom's house, I couldn't work uh, because I have health conditions where I can't wear a mask. And um, um, so, uh, between three jobs, uh, and, so uh, what we're going to do is because you're not on the record right now, okay. uh, I'm totally fine. We'll bring you up here when there are public defenders available, and then we'll determine if you qualify. Okay. So I want to let you know I knew you were here, but we're just waiting for someone to be available. Okay. Not a problem. <laughs> that's okay. Sir on the aisle in the black hooded sweatshirt, what's your name? Kevin Collister. Okay, that's Mr. Collister. And next to Mr. Collister, what is Collister? Oh, also a Mr. Collister. Two Mr. Collisters. A gentleman in the back on the aisle. Uh, Bridgewater. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Collister, let's have you come on up first. Should you get your paperwork pulled up here? And if you could state your name and date of birth, please, for the record. Kevin Collister, August 18th, 1990. All right, Mr. Collister. Just taking a look here. So it looks like, let me see. So we had that really, uh, we had the mental health documentation from back in October. We haven't had anything since that time. Were you doing any manner of treatment at this time, Mr. Collister? No, Your Honor. Okay, well, that would explain why we didn't have any. Did they recommend any treatment going forward? I know you were in their intensive program, but usually they have like a a stepped down amount of treatment usually. I was in in house the um, inpatient, and then I got yep. stepped to outpatient. Okay, and I graduated that. Um, last time I was here, you guys didn't have my mental evaluation on file. Correct. So I got a hold of them and they emailed it over to us. Yes, sir. Because I still don't have it. So the I piece, either. I guess the piece that I have, Mr. Collister, in all candor with you, is the piece that says it, it's from October of 2022 that says you had completed your outpatient successfully, but they've never sent any of the actual evaluation and treatment stuff ever. Okay. I got a hold of them two to three weeks ago mm -hmm. and they, I requested that they send over the evaluation mm -hmm. and she called me back within the hour and said that she emailed it over. Okay. To the battleground municipal court. Yes. With my case numbers attached to. Yeah, those sometimes show up because of the health concerns. So what we might do, do you think you could get actual paper copies if you went to Rainier Springs, Mr. Collister? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, let's try to do that. Okay. Um, because other than that, it looks to me like you've got 80 or 10 days of work pre done. Um, it's just a matter of getting that paperwork. So let me put a little note here and then we'll get you a date forward, okay? Yes, Your Honor. All right, give me just a sec. Okay. And I'm just going to say you're going to bring it in on the next court date. Uh, so my thought right now is to set this matter out, Mr. Collister, about a month. That puts us near the end of April. Would you be available on the 27th of April? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, we'll do it then. Um, other than that, just keep up the good work on the work crew, and we'll just look for that, uh, that final peak, okay? Thank you. All right. We'll get you some paperwork over by the door. Once you have it, you are free to go. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay.
All right, Mr. Bridgewater, if you want to come forward, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Just getting your paperwork pulled up here. Give me just a moment, please. No worries. And so are you in treatment right now? I am in intensive outpatient Monday through Thursday, mm -hmm. 6 to 8, 15 p.m. And are you doing that at Lifeline? Um, I'm doing it through Lifeline. Okay. Uh, the counselor runs through Lifeline. That is correct. Okay. So I have the paperwork from them back in January. What I'm looking through the file for is just any kind of update information. I'm, I'm I'm guessing you don't have a lot of information. I brought all copies of everything with me today. Okay. Um, I entered in patient treatment on January 24th. Mm -hmm. um, I did have another uh, evaluation done uh, for a treatment plan. I brought that with me as well. Um, I while I was in treatment. Um, it's great. I did very well. I come to understand that what I thought I was doing would have helped uh, put in the required uh, time and efforts towards my case. But as I spoke with my counselor after I got out, the inpatient doesn't really go towards uh, ILP. Right. Yeah. That being said, um, I stayed in the program the allotted time um, to completion on March 1st. By March 1st, I have all this documentation as well. I did do while inpatient, I mean, I was going to panels four days, four nights a week with AA being rock bottom, uh, cornerstone, et cetera, new morning. Um, when I got out of inpatient was on March 1st, okay. I had not found a sober living at that time. Mm -hmm. um, I had connected with Harps for assistance, uh, Linda. Mm -hmm. um, so I spent the night outside Rainier Springs because I knew I could not go back to where my living situation was. I put myself in Rainier Springs, which I have that on March 2nd. Okay. I got out of Rainier Springs on March 7th. Um, as soon as I got out, the next day I had an Oxford interview. They accepted me. I moved into the Oxford home on March 9th. I immediately contacted the court and updated my address and my living situation. Uh, I began outpatient, intensive outpatient, March 14th. Um, I did do weekly UAs while I was in inpatient treatment. Um, but then as soon as I was out, uh, since March 14th, I've had three UAs done. I brought the documentation with me as well. Are you doing them in the Oxford house? No. Well, I have to do one when I moved in, but I'm yeah. actually doing them through Lifeline. Okay. They're documenting that through Lifeline. Okay. I have that with me as well. Um, since uh, before March 14th, I've been to four uh, group recovery meetings a week, AA or NA. Um, I have that all documented as well and signed off. I have a home group now, which is A New Morning, which I go three times a week. I have a sponsor now, which is Dave. He's a wonderful person. I am a member of the Recovery Cafe now, and I join one group uh, circle a week um, on top of my eight and a half, I guess nine hours of intensive outpatient that I would do it as well. And I brought copies of all of this information with me today. Mm -hmm. So I am. Thank you for taking those additional steps. Very clearly you or sobriety is. It's the main thing for me. Top of mind right now it feels amazing i've never heard someone who has spent the night outside of rainier springs to get in the next day so that it that was, was a cold night that alone demonstrates a good deal of commitment <laughs> well i knew 
the triggers and everything that I was going to put myself into wasn't going to work mm -hmm. when I, if I were to go back to a place I was living. So Ashley, um, the paperwork you brought in, if I look at it, it's completely fine. I can give it back to you. Um, it does stay as part of our court file. So if there's, I always just tell clients, if there are things that you don't want to be part of a court file, to take them out, I, I don't need to certainly, my job is not to infringe on your privacy. It's simply just to make sure that you're in compliance with your program. Everything I brought with me are copies of the original documents. Okay. I did, when I was in Lifeline, I did um, access our grant access for all information to the battleground court system. Okay. I did contact um, them. I, but again, I don't know what may have got lost in yeah. translation or any of that. So sure. this can all stay with you. If I need letters from either Harps or my Oxford president in the home or uh, my new sponsor or whatever, I can get those for you. Understood. Do you want to approach with that folder then? So Absolutely. Quick look. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So your your inpatient it looks like was through Lifeline as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ms. Carmi, do you want to review any of the documents? Um, I can take a quick look at them. I'm. You know, I I will make the representation. They show yeah. exactly what but, Mr. Bridgewater said. Then that's fine. I know there's been some hiccups, and I'm very happy to hear that Mr. Bridgewater is back in active treatment. Um, you know, a month ago, this today probably would have gone a different direction. So I'm really glad to hear that you're back in active treatment and just keep up the good work. Thank you. Yeah, it's been amazing. So Mr. Bridgewater, at this time, I'm going to find that you are fully in compliance. I am just going to make a couple of notations here on the form real quick. We're going to see you back here. Did you ever have an opportunity, Mr. Bridgewater, to do a victim's panel? I was thinking about that as I was driving here and realized you know, that was something they told the me that I could do through. right away. I, no problem. I will get on that. I'll put a, I'll put a note here. That in fact, I told my mom on the way here. I was like, mom. Yeah, he's the one thing the judge is going to point out with all the stuff I've been doing with the victim's <laughs> panel. But yeah, not a problem. Okay. So we're going to have you back on the 22nd of June. Um, any point you complete that victim's panel, you can just send that our way. I'm going to return your folder to you so you can keep that. I put the other documents in the court folder, so I do have those documents as well. So this is coming back to you. We're going to be getting you some documents over by the desk and keep up the good work. Good luck Thank with you your sobriety. Much. Thank you. And Your Honor, we have Ms. Angstrom on as a public defender if we uh, need her. Yes, the only thing I want to do first, and I appreciate Ms. Ingstrom. I know she's not feeling well today, so thank you for being here, Ms. Ingstrom. Is I'm going to take Ms. Garcia real quick okay. because she's been super patient, and I think I have a phone number, so let me give her a call. Hello. Hi, Ms. Garcia. This is Judge Wheeler calling from Hello. Battleground Municipal Court. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Wonderful. I appreciate you uh, sticking with us, ma'am. Um, I'm just going to get your paperwork pulled up, okay, Ms. Garcia? Okay. Um, 
So it looks to me like we assigned back in December some community service. Have you gotten that completed yet, ma'am? I think some of it completed. I have on uh, object to three days now. <clears throat> back in uh, January, I went and started it, and then I went into the hospital for two and a half weeks and had surgery on the gallbladder mm. and had that removed. So then I did another day um, just yesterday for maybe two hours at a time, so it's not, you know, a whole bunch, but I have the paperwork for that. I don't know how to send it to you or if I, I can show you on the screen. Where are you doing your community service? At the food bank. At the food bank, the North County Food Bank? Right. How many hours do you have in total, Ms. Garcia? Seven and a half. They do two a day. And so I went two days before I had surgery. And then now I just went another day yesterday and stayed after like 40 minutes. So oh. I did two and a half. No problem. Yesterday. Okay, so I'm going to set this out about two months. Hopefully now with that surgery behind you, you're able to do a little bit more, okay? Absolutely. So we're going to see you back, Ms. Garcia, in May. I'm going to have you back on May 25th. And if you have that community service done, I'll be looking for that form, okay? Okay. Are you still getting your, are you still getting your mail at the address on Douglas Road in Toledo? I am. All right, we'll send the paperwork there. Thank you, Ms. Garcia. You can go ahead and hang up and log off of Zoom. Okay, thank you so much. All right, that's ready to okay. print. All right, Mr. McMullen, good afternoon. Your Honor, good afternoon. I apologize, Your Honor, for my late my late entry. I was in a court in another a courtroom, Your Honor. So I did want the court to know I, I advised Battleground yesterday this this was probably going to be a problem. So. Um, that's why I'm late. I mean, I mean, you were this close, Mr. McMullen, to a contempt finding, but I'm going to let it slide this time. God bless you. Your Honor, thank you so much. All, <laughs> All right. right. All right. So I see that Ms. Wilson has connected. Ms. Wilson, can you hear the court, ma'am? I can. I'm sorry. I'm trying to show you my picture. Goodness. Yeah, if you can uh, get your camera functioning, that would be very helpful. I'm sorry. One second, please. No problem. No, oh, shoot. Goodness. Oh gosh. Well, there we go. There's Ms. Wilson. Hi, sorry about that. I had to run into my office really quick. Everyone left. Not and I didn't want to forget my purse. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Can you uh, give us your name and date of birth, please, for the record? Uh, yes, Your Honor. My name is Hillary Wilson, and my date of birth is 72986. Okay. Ms. Wilson, we are uh, joined today with your attorney, Mr. McMullen. Uh, Mr. McMullen, how are we asking to proceed on Ms. Wilson's case? Your Honor, your Honor, Ms. Wilson is doing absolutely excellent. She she uh, has done really well in her inpatient treatment program. I've kept uh, Ms. Carmi up basically and kind of what's 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 going on. But she's, um, you know, thankfully, Your Honor, Hillary was kept a little longer in the treatment, and I encourage that. Matter of fact, I was hoping she'd even be there even longer, but we worked with the insurance. We did the best we could. She did a, a, a longer period and she's been very successful. After that, she went up north, Your Honor, and is in a sober living community now. So although technically she's no longer in the initial in, uh, uh, inpatient treatment section, um, she's still doing really well and she's still very highly involved in treatment and actively involved in her sober living community. So, so far, so good, Your Honor. We're going to ask the court to allow us to get some additional time. And I had told Ms. Carmi that, you know, our whole uh, focus here and really you know, much of the of the reason for the case, Your Honor, is the substance abuse issue, and, and she's really attempting to slay that dragon. So once that's um, completed and we've got all the materials to show, Ms. Carmen, I think it's going to be helpful uh, in the in in the with the case, Your Honor. So we'd ask for more time for that for that reason. Okay. Um, and so far as getting this matter set over, Mr. McMullen, have you had the opportunity to talk to Ms. Wilson about her right to a speedy trial? Your Honor, I I I did, and, and she understands, and she is willing to waive today uh, so that we can get the additional time for her case. Yep. How far out are we asking to set Ms. Wilson's next hearing? Well, Your Honor, I was, you know, and this is where I, I, I did not get a chance to speak with uh, with Ms. Carmi about, about that particular issue, but I was hoping maybe, Your Honor, for a six-week, unless Ms. Carmi has some, some other idea, but I was thinking maybe a six-week um, because I, I honestly do not even have any of the materials from the initial, um, you know, uh, uh, treatment program. I don't have any of the, of the closure, any of the, uh, uh, indication from there. So that's coming your honor. So six, six to eight weeks would probably be good. 
So if the waiver is commencing today, Mr. McMullen, I would be probably more inclined for six weeks just to let you know. Oh, sure. Your Honor, if it would be okay with the court, uh, we could certainly, you know, my, my thought would be to waive commencing on the date of the next court appearance. So there would be zero. Oh, okay. I, I, had, I had misheard that, Mr. McMullen. I apologize. So it's okay, Your Honor. Yeah, I, I'm fine with, with at any point if the waiver is commencing at that time. Let's go to Ms. Carmi and get her feedback. Go ahead, Ms. Carmi. That's absolutely fine. Six to eight weeks is acceptable to the city. Okay, so Ms. Wilson, have you been able to talk to Mr. McMullen about your right to a speedy trial? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay, and you understand if we do a waiver of that right and set a new commencement date, the 90-day jurisdiction for the city of Richfield will begin on that day. Uh, yes, by my Your Honor. If we're setting this matter out eight weeks, it's about to the 25th of May. Does perfect. that date work with the parties? That's perfect, Your Honor. Ms. Carmi, May 25th? Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Wilson's May 25th work for you? Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Wilson, are you in agreement to commence your speedy trial on that day? Yes, Your Honor. All right. I will accept the waiver from Ms. Wilson, finding knowing, intelligent, and voluntarily made. Ms. Wilson's next court date is going to be May 25th, 2023. And that's also the date her speedy trial will commence. Ms. Wilson, that hearing will be at 1.30 p.m. Uh, release conditions that we have in place. I know, um, so look here. Yeah, and this was something maybe your honor would want to make a decision on. We had talked about instituting random UAs once inpatient was done, but I know she, I understand she's been sober living and I frankly am not sure. I believe that's up north. It's not in this county. So I'm not sure that would work at this point. So we may want to clarify that. Mr. McMullen, is that correct in regards to Ms. Wilson's proximity to Clark County? Your Honor, I know that she, let, let me just ask Your Honor, because I don't think there's any problem with that. H H Hillary, where exactly is your sober living, uh, uh, just so that I'm not misstating to the court where you're at, and so Ms. Carmi knows, wh where are you living? I'm actually living, um, the. I'm actually still in a PHP program, which is a partial hospitalization program yeah. um, through the Hotel California, and I'm currently in Bellevue, and I am given random UAs here, so. Okay, okay, and Your Honor, that is, that is, that is in line with what I thought was, was happening, Your Honor, right? Um, so yeah, it seems to me that any concern about her, her, you know, using at this point in time, I, I just can't imagine uh, because of the situation she's in, the living situation she's in. I, I think we'd probably be be pretty safe there, Your Honor. But I would certainly advise the court immediately if she were to be released or if something else happened, because I, I understand the, the circumstances. Ms. Carmi. Yes, that's I. Given her current status and the fact that there are random UAs imposed, I wouldn't want need that as a condition. I think what we wrote last time on the paperwork was should that change yeah. um, and she was essentially living on her own again we would impose it if this case hadn't resolved yes yeah yeah so i'm just for the parties i am noting on the record certainly we have an ongoing violate no laws, notify the court of any change of address or phone number, no consumption or possession of alcohol or non-prescribed drugs. I've just noted here, random UAs if sober living status changes. So Perfect. as long as she is in a sober facility that has some manner of those protections, I think I am going to continue to be comfortable if she were outside of all of those sort of guidelines and housed, you know, in a circumstance where there was not oversight, I think that we would impose that random UA condition. 100% understood, Your Honor. It makes all the sense in the world. Okay. So, Mr., uh, what we're going to do right now, Mr. McMullen, is we're going to send Ms. Wilson's documents to you um, just uh, rather than try to route that through the facility she's at in Bellevue right now. Oh, that's Again, great. We'll see you both back here on May 25th at 1.30. Um, and if there's nothing further at this time, this, this matter is completed. Nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you for everything this afternoon. And Ms. Carmi, thank you as always. Thank right. you. Thank you both. Thank you. Bye, Hillary. Okay. okay. So, Ms. Nikolavia, Nikoleva, sorry. Come on up here to the restroom, please, ma'am.
If I could have you for the record, just state your name and your date of birth. Uh, 122884, Lydia Nikolaev. And so my understanding from the information you provided, and just because we were a little bit off of the record and you were seated, you are no longer being represented by an attorney, it sounds like. You're yes, currently Your Honor. Say. Okay. And my understanding is that you were going to be asking to be screened today for a court-appointed attorney. Is that yes, correct? Your Honor. I'm going to ask you some questions about your income to determine if you qualify. Mm -hmm. Do you receive any manner of state assistance at all right now? No, I, wor I was working three jobs before the incident, and now um, only Dash Door let me in after I appealed because when the court registered this, both Dash Door and Uber kicked me from deliveries, and I was entering for corporate. Um, I I'm uh, highly educated, but due to the economy, I had some offers pulled from Intel, and, and so I, I had to make do and so I was working these uh, low paying jobs and unfortunately when the court registered this uh, after, uh, into thing it came up in my criminal um, thing and Uber immediately um, kicked me out so my own uh, I appealed with Dashware as well um, initially they denied my appeal then I sent them all my degrees all Washington academic team I sent them all my awards and then I uh, explained to them that legally I haven't been found guilty of these charges, that the position is pending. So, you know, you, why are you guys, uh, you know, uh, eliminating my employment? And they uh, allowed me to deliver. Um, I'm currently interviewing with corporations, but when I tell them um, about the situation, uh, they don't look too fondly um, on it. So you currently at this time are working one job? Or one two? job with Dashdoor. Um, um, I initially was offered a position by an attorney um, for a legal assistant. Um, uh, he offered me the position within, he told me he wanted me to start within 24 hours. He, he knew about the legal situation. I had emailed him during my interview, uh, but uh, he had, um, he he didn't have a building yet and he hired too many legal assistants. So I was let go after right, 24 so, hours. So, so I had to- just, I'm just gonna just try to get information on me. That's okay. I had to resign from McDonald's. I had two jobs, uh, three jobs, uh, Uber kicked me out. I had to resign from McDonald's to start the legal position sure. because the attorney required within 24 hours our start date and that's just yeah. all i'm trying to figure out right now one employment <laughs> dash door door unfortunately right now yeah about how much are you earning each month through doordash i only started this in january um in my earnings vary I, I i i have them on my phone i can show you your that's honor totally fine just estimate a low month with doordash about how mm -hmm. much you're earning uh well, I haven't worked the full month, but I estimated around uh, 2000 uh, give and take, uh, depending on gas tips and things like that. Uh, it's, it hasn't been a month yet, Your Honor. I literally okay. started in, in January when I had um, my seasonal employment ended with Burlington because I lost the Intel job offer um, in November. And there's as you know, it's like a hiring freeze during okay. their time. And All right. We're, we're, yeah, okay. So at this point, where we are in your process, ma'am, is that we have a public defender available because we're near the end of your speedy trial time frame. I didn't ask for a speedy trial. I actually... Um, let me just let me just get a little bit more out. Yeah. So it's not something that a person asks for or not asks for. It's constitutional right, so every person has it. And that speedy trial time frame started back in January. So where we are right now is we can absolutely have you talk to a public defender to see if you understand that right to speedy trial. And then if you want to waive that right to give the public defender some additional time on your case. Yes, I want to re, um, waive the speedy trial, and I want to get into a jury. Um, jury, I'm pleading not guilty all charges. I understand. Not guilty pleas are to be entered. I'm not changing that whatsoever. Um, where I am is, though, I generally would want you to get legal advice before I have you waive that right to speedy trial. Okay? So I have Ms. Engstrom, who's one of our public defenders available, to speak to you about your right to a speedy trial. She can call you over the phone, or we might be able to set you up where you can talk to her on Zoom briefly about your right to a speedy trial. I don't want a speedy trial. I like a jury, um, I like a jury trial, Your Honor. Uh, I was sexually and physically assaulted so by are, the police officer. So. Those are two different things. So a jury trial is something that can happen. A speedy trial is just the amount of time a person has. Uh, Okay. So normally the speedy trial is 90 days from the date of your arraignment. 
And what the attorneys who were on your case did was they appeared for you at that initial arraignment. Mm -hmm. And so the arraignment time frame started on the date that you were originally scheduled for your arraignment, which would have been February 9th. I came that day, Your Honor, but they told me the attorneys entered the non-guilty plea. And uh, yeah. so again, I'm going to just continue a little bit longer. Okay. So the 90 days starts running that day. Okay. So it means that right now we're almost, we're quite a ways into your speedy trial. Okay. So we're over almost 60 days at this time into speedy trial. So what the attorney is going to talk to you about, Ms. Engstrom, is just whether or not you want to waive that right. Doesn't impact whatsoever you having a jury trial. It's just how much time your next attorney would have to prepare your case. Mm. Do you understand? Yes. Do you want to talk to Ms. Engstrom so you understand that speedy trial right? Um, I would like my attorney to have more time uh, to work on a case. The only question I'm asking so, right now is, did you want to talk to Ms. Engstrom uh, just about what your right to a speedy trial no, is? No, unnecessary. Okay. Um, do you want to waive your right to a speedy trial? Yes, so, yes, uh, Your Honor, so my attorney can have more time to look over the case. Okay. Do you have any questions at all about your right to a speedy trial? Mm, uh, any uh, legal restrictions on me placed during that time? With the speedy trial? Well, there would not be waiver. I mean, my apologies. The release conditions that are already in place will stay in place. Okay. Speedy trial won't influence that at all. Okay, that's all I needed to know. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna ask you the same question again. Do you have any questions about your right to speedy trial? No, Your Honor. Okay. So Ms. Ingstrom, thank you for joining us today. I know that you are not feeling well. I am confident at this point that she has an understanding of her right to speedy trial. So I will let you go, and I hope you get some rest. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Yeah, am I appointed a public? Sorry. The answer is yes. Whom do we want to appoint? Yeah. You want to appoint Ms. Engstrom? Okay. Ms. Engstrom's challenge is that we just don't have any cards for her, so I, we're going to have to. Okay. Got it. So we're going to get you Ms. Engstrom's information. Okay. We're going to do a waiver of speedy trial commencing today. Um, my apologies. I talk a little fast. Just that due to the ADHD, I'm a, it's cool. in, the energy just goes up and down. My apologies, sir. Well, and people get nervous sometimes. Well, yeah, that's when it usually happens when I'm nervous. So <laughs> otherwise, it's fairly normal. <laughs> that is not a problem at all. You've conducted yourself very well, and I appreciate your patience today because I know you've been waiting for a while. Yeah. I've actually been around the courtroom, but not in this situation. So it's a different feeling. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So we're beginning our speedy trial today. I am going to find following our colloquy, which is a fancy word that means just the discussion that we've had, that I believe you understand your right to speedy trial. If we begin that today, it would give the city of Battleground 90 days from today to have a trial take place. Are you in agreement with that? Yes. All right. I will accept the waiver. I'll find it knowing, intelligent, and voluntarily made. Just for our record, we did have a public defender present if there was any questions and it did not appear that there were any questions. So we're gonna move forward at this time. We're gonna assign a future court date with Ms. Engstrom. My recollection is, Madam Clerks, that we have a date for her near the end of April so we can get her up to speed. Okay, would that be a date that would work for you for your next court date? Oh, yes, Your Honor, I'm flexible right now. Not a problem. Unless I get hired, but then I'll like I'll definitely make well, we're all, priority, Your Honor. All hoping you get hired and thank you, Your Honor. It's been way too long and unemployed. <laughs> I understand. Um, so we're going to have you come back on the twenty seventh of April, twenty twenty three. We have ten o'clock in the morning available that day. That will be the next time okay. you're in court. That is a mandatory court date. Release on recognizance will continue. 
and we're going to get you some information so you can be in touch with Ms. Engstrom. Okay, okay, sounds good. Thank you, Your Honor. No problem. Um, we need some it would be in the front. The door? Okay. okay, thank you, Once Your you Honor. Once you have it, you are free to go. Thank you, ma'am. Thank have you so day. much. All right, have a good day. All right. So I'm just going to call the rest of my 130 docket, and then my hope is everybody else here is on my two o'clock docket. Do I have Matthew Calhoun Prater here? Jennifer Carrillo? Christy Knapp? Amber Sickler? Do I have, I think I have Ms. Berea Cruz in the waiting room right now. She oh. is a pro se, it looks like. Yes, and she's not been in contact with our office, so. Do you want to bring her in, Ms. Carmi? I do. Let me figure out from my um, mitigation people who is here. Do I have Daniel Aday here present? Okay, he was one of our first people here. Joni Dallin. Dallin. Uh, Annette Kangas. Annette Kangas is here. Raymond Leone. Joseph Mupo. Okay, perfect. All right, so let me take Mr. Aday first. Appreciate his patience today. Probably watched a little bit more court than he wanted to. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Can I have you state your name and date of birth, sir? Daniel 80. 80, okay. 11, 13, 59. Thank you, Mr. 80. Mr. 80, you are before the court today um, to do what's called a mitigation hearing. And before I start a mitigation hearing, I just like everyone to understand what it is, okay? A mitigation hearing is telling the court that the infraction happened, but asking me to lower the fine. Before I start a mitigation hearing, I also like people to be aware of if they are eligible for what's called a deferred finding. I'm going to talk to you about how they're different. If we do a mitigation hearing, this information would go to the Department of Licensing and it would go to your insurance company. If we do a deferred finding. As long as there is no moving violations in the next year, it doesn't get reported to the Department of Licensing, and after the one year, it gets dismissed. The cost would go from $217 to $150. So what I ask folks before I start a mitigation hearing is, would you prefer to do a deferred finding instead? Um, I just want to... Like you said, I mean, I did the infraction. I just wanted to give an explanation. Mm -hmm. You can absolutely do that, sir. I think what we're just trying to figure out, at least what I'm trying to figure out, is what's best for you financially overall. And I think for most folks, not having this on their driving record tends to be the financially better option. So I, I, I'm more than fine with, I'll hear you out either way but I just need to know exactly what type of hearing you'd like me to do before I start. I'd like you just to dismiss it with my explanation. <laughs> <laughs> so we only have two <laughs> options on board right now, Mr. 80. That's clever. You may have a career in law. Um, simply the mitigation at this time or the deferred finding? Deferred. You are a astute man, sir. So yes, I will do the deferred finding. Why don't you tell me what you want to tell me? I just wanted to say that in the center, they changed the speed about a year ago, a little more. Mm -hmm. 25 years I've been driving across that bridge. And oh, just, it's always been, and it's what was it? What did it used to be? 50. Yeah. When you're coming down the hill, it used to be 50. And then they changed okay. it to 35. And then 50 feet later, it's 25. So they're slowing you down quite a bit. Well, within a short period of time coming down a hill, yeah, it's kind of, sure. you know, hard to do that. And plus, all the years I've been coming across that bridge, it's kind of taking a little longer to get used to it. What do they say about old habits? Sometimes the old habits die hard. Yep. Well, the good news, sir, is this is not something that's going to be on your driving record. Um, we'll get this to $150. Just keep in mind when you hit that bridge, just think of me and say, hey, probably want to slow down here. I want to get this dismissed. So thank you for your patience. Say, Mr. 80, we'll get you some documents over by the door. Once you have it, you're free to go. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Ms. Kangas. All right, ma'am. And can I have you state your name and date of birth, please? Um, Annette Kangas, 326, 1972. 
Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Ms. Kangas, you are also here for a mitigation hearing. You heard me talk to Mr. 80. Uh, you also are eligible for a deferred finding if you would like that instead of the mitigation hearing. Do you have a preference or would like me to explain it to you? Um, what was the mitigation? Yeah, so the mitigation is admitting in this circumstance that you did not, you failed to renew the tags within the two months. Um, so I would be lowering the fine in that circumstance, but it would go on your driving record and would get reported to the Department of Licensing. Um, if we did a deferred finding, the cost would go to $150, and as long as there was no other non-moving violations in the next year, it would get dismissed at the end of that time. Okay. Um, what do you think would be best? I don't really know. <laughs> yeah. That's tricky. So I can't give you any legal advice. Uh, as a person who is a driver, I always think that insurance tends to be a little bit cheaper, the less things that are on our drive record. So as just a conscious consumer, I think it's probably the financially uh, it could be a little bit cheaper as long as you can have no other non-moving violations in the next year to probably do the deferred finding, but it's not legal advice. It's simply money sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll do that. Okay. All right, so I will enter the deferred finding for the amount of $150. We're going to get you a copy of some paperwork, Ms. Kangas, and once you have your paperwork, you are free to go. Okay, thank you, thank ma'am. Have a good day. All right, and Mr. I know it's not Mupo. Yeah, yeah it is. Oh, it is Mupo. Oh, wonderful. Wow. I thought it was a little bit different. I was gonna say, I actually is at least it is how it's how it reads. Yep. Um, it is phonetic. Uh, can I have you state your name and date of birth, please, for the record? Joseph Vincent Mupo the third, nine five ninety four. Okay. You've heard me talk to folks about options today. You are eligible for a deferred finding. Um, I'm assuming that's what you're going to be asking for. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Um, also, I would like to state that um, I have just gotten insurance and my um, tags updated Nice and everything, so I'm, I'm working on it. The thing that we just have to be careful here, Mr. Mupo, is just that it's a single deferred finding, so it's 150 total, but you are on the hook if there was a moving or a non-moving violation, so just be real careful for the next year with your driving, okay? Yes, Ron. Right. All right. Well, I have gotten the paperwork taken care of. It'll take our clerks a minute or two. But once you see Ms. Kangas get her paperwork, you're welcome to go up there and get yours. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Your Honor. Yep. Have a good day. You too. Ms. Sass, do you know if Ms. Carmi was going to talk to Ms. Berea Cruz on the phone right now? Okay. Wonderful. I was hoping that's what was happening. It's weird to hear my name. Uh, uh oh. If I hear my middle name, that's when I think of my mom. Well, and I think it's a certain way of saying, like, some of people call me sad, but uh -huh. like a certain way of saying sad. Oh. Don't, don't see my name like that. Mm. Because it makes me feel like Got it. Got it. Well, you probably have, but it's just a matter of whether they, he knows. Yeah. I'm not very perceptive either, so. It's amazing how that can stick with you, though, for years. Sure. Stop mentoring, but hearing your name a certain way and thinking. Yeah, hearing the entirety of your name, yeah. unless you're like graduating or something, is usually not a good thing. See, how that doesn't even phase my second child. I'll use her full name, and she's just. Well, from what I've seen of her, I don't know if very much phases her at this stage. Yeah. I have to say, and this went fast. Yeah. It's like six minutes to three. Yeah. We were flying. My brain is not working with all the you know, 
Your Honor, Ms. Carrillo left a message for the court uh, at noontime that she was ill, um, apparently with possibly an abscessed tooth and going to the dentist this afternoon. If maybe we can set her case over a week or two. Thank you, Kay. Let me take a look at her file real quick here and we'll see if we can make that happen. Jennifer Carrillo. 2A0515650. Looks like she is largely in compliance on her case. It's on a stay. Let's set this out. One of those upcoming dockets we had when Carol sent it out was a really small docket. Do you remember which one it was? Which one? Yeah, Next week is small, and as it goes back into the 60s again, is my recollection. Yeah, the 13th is big. Um, uh, let's see, I think it's so next week, I think about 48 weeks is still in order, and then the week after, we're like almost 70. Okay. Um, isn't there one that's a week or two further out that's like, like in the 20s or 30s? Ooh. I can go grab my phone. I okay. And we do have Ms. Barrera Cruz back on. Okay, are you ready on that, Jill? Yes. Ms. Barrera Cruz, if I could have you unmute, ma'am, and then turn your camera on, please. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Can I have you state your name and date of birth, please, for the record? Um, Andrea Barrera Cruz, January 2nd, 2004. Thank you, Ms. Barrera Cruz. Uh, I do have Ms. Carmi here. I know that you are currently representing yourself. Uh, go ahead, Ms. Carmi. Yes, Your Honor. I have talked to Ms. Barrera Cruz, and she's kind of in that intermediate point where she doesn't qualify for a public defender, but a private attorney is fairly expensive. She is asking for a little more time to uh, get reinstated. She has a licensing test uh, here in about two weeks or less. Okay. My office has let her know that assuming that that occurs, that will positively impact the ultimate resolution in her case. Um, so my understanding today is that we would be doing about a, a three week uh, set out so that she could get information to me about reinstatement if that does occur. It looks to me like, so commencement is the 16th of February. Correct. So we're about halfway through speedy trial right now. Three more weeks. Do you want a waiver or are you okay with no waiver? I think with that three weeks set out, I would be comfortable moving forward without um, a waiver, especially because she is pro se. Okay. So Ms. Barrera Cruz, it sounds like you are taking some steps here to get the license situation figured out. Is that fair to say? Yes. And we think about three weeks from now, we might be in a different circumstance. Yes. Okay. So we're going to set you out uh, three weeks. That'll take you out to the court's um, April 20th docket. Okay. Do we want to leave this on for 2 p.m., Ms. Carmi? Or... Um, that is a great question. I don't know that I have a strong preference. Ms. Barrera Cruz, I can put you at 10 a.m. or 2 p.m. Do you have a personal preference as to what time you appear for court? Uh, 2 p.m. would probably be better. All right, we'll put you at 2 p.m. I'm just getting your documents filled out here. Give me just a minute. Okay. Okay, next court date is going to be on April 20th, 2023 at 2 p.m. Uh, okay. Release conditions, including no driving without a valid license, remain in place. Your continued release on your recognizance. 
Are you still getting your mail at the address on 23rd Avenue? Yes. All right, we'll mail your paperwork there. Good luck with the licensing. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you. You can log out. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Your Honor, the next court date that we have uh, that only has 14 cases right now is April 27th. Ah, oh, that's the magic 27th. court date. Hey, let's keep it because my birthday is two days later. <laughs> so, yeah, unfortunately, law enforcement is going to start putting tickets on to those days. So, on to April 27th? Yeah, because they go like they schedule them about two weeks out. Um, yeah, they're two weeks out. They're going to start getting to those days. Sorry, Joe. They haven't been running. I think in observance of your birthday, we should. I think in observance of my birthday, we should close. We should close docket. Yeah, <laughs> we're here for just like kidding. Thirty-five minutes. <laughs> All right. So in terms of Ms. Carrillo, she's she's got her community service done. She's got most of her stuff done. I'm just trying to figure out where we set her. Um, let's set her out to the April twentieth docket, unless you have an objection, Ms. Carmi. That docket is six pages so far. So that would be a no. Without arraignments. Let's go to the 27th. She can go to my birthday docket. Let's go to the Miss Carmi docket. Um, so Sorry. we'll set her to April 27th. Um, I, if we could just print the Jennifer Carrillo, I will sign off on it. And, um, all right, so what that leaves right now is we have three for the probation docket that we can go through, and then there's the contested hearing, I think, and then I think we're almost done. Okay. Okay. Let's do um, let's do the three matters that were scheduled. So the first matter I have, oh, Mr. Calhoun Prather's ride was delayed, should be here by 2.30. 3.02, but let's give him a little bit more time. Let's go with Christy Knapp. Ms. Knapp is a driving while suspended. She was ordered 16 hours of community service, no documentation filed. Just looking at her return to court paperwork. Looks like she was scheduled for today's date at 1.30. I don't see any new charges, so I'm gonna do a warrant in the standard amount for Ms. Nat. Thank you. Uh, last matter was Amber Sickler. This was also on for stay compliance. The first hold up. Ms. three days of work crew, none completed, no proof of theft awareness class. Looks like no new charges. My inclination is warrant issuing the standard amount, but let me just make sure her stay paperwork has the correct date on it. Yeah, so on this day paperwork, it says April 6th. Exactly. So it looks to me, I know that the notice was sent for today, but I think that we should set this matter over to April 6th for Ms. Sickler. Yeah, and I think that makes sense. I think what happened was when she was terminated from work crew on February 14th, we stepped up for review, um, but I am certainly fine uh, noting noting the FTA because I know we did on February 14th send a new notice however or excuse me February 22nd um but we'll, we could note the FTA but no warrant to issue all right I'm just doing a return form for the sixth that I'm finally signing off on and she'll probably fail to appear then too but at least it's consistent with her documents okay so my understanding is that there was a contested hearing at three. Yes, and it is with attorney Robert Anderson and a Spanish interpreter. Did that do we did we reset that? 
don't think we need, I think it's a Spanish speaking case, but I don't think there was an interpreter. Oh, my docket notes show interpreter Spanish. Yeah, I don't have Marta coming today since okay. this was a contested hearing. Usually Mr. Anderson just does it on him without the um, his client. Thank you. That makes sense. All right. I will email Mr. Anderson. I'm going to step off the bench because I think the only two matters we have is Mr. Calhoun that was had the ride late and Mr. Anderson and just come get me if either one of them is ready and we'll be okay. in recess until right. then. <laughs> I think the next time we have Thayer in May. Oh, okay. I know, but I'm so good to be sure. Is there some way that I can see the graphic adjustment that you see? Yeah, there are. So the ones that got it, the citations that came in today, those as well. Oh, I've already filed them away. Oh, are they filed? Yeah. Do they come by email? No, um, we have to go into sector and I was I wanted to see how the target zero was turned out. Um I don't know if I can log in. I mean that's a lot more tickets than what I used. For infraction? Yeah, for infractions or that about for one. When they have it, when they have emphasis, that's pretty right. Yeah. When I go back out of my desk, I can look. Oh, it's okay. No, I thought it was the end of the day. Oh, actually, I can tell you how to move that graph. I don't know how much work Martin did yesterday. Well, 
David Bridge Gill is posted as your name of the state and for development of the civil things that's on the team on the box of the state. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of the twelve for Rich Gill. The rest were battlegrounds. Okay. Okay, we have to do that from the right well, who break it? We heard from them again. Who's that? Thank you for having me here in my two thirds. Mr. Anderson, are you ready on the Sanchez Escamilia case? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay. And it looks to me like you are asking to proceed with an improper lane usage infraction contested hearing. Uh, Your Honor, this is uh, uh, a weird situation. Um, this case was originally, uh, or not this case, but rather the, the client was originally in front of this court uh, about a month ago on an arraignment on a DUI. It is a blood draw case. Um, the case was dismissed awaiting the results of that blood draw. The issue is um, this uh, infraction obviously involves many of the allegations involving and stems from that DUI stop. Uh, because of that, we'd ask to set this case over. Um, we, uh, we simply can't make any statements on the record involving that DUI, unfortunately. Whether the infraction took place or not, I mean, the, the elements are, are vehicle operation, location, and the, whether the blood draw is accurate and reliable. So... I'm not going to set your infraction over two years, Mr. Anderson, while the blood draw comes back. So I understand that, Your Honor. Um, I, if we can get one set over um, just for one, one simple time, maybe a couple of weeks, I think I might have an answer for us at the next go around. I okay. may have a way to resolve this issue with Miss uh, Miss Carmi. Um, I want to kind of check with her office on this issue might have an idea of how to resolve it. Any objection, Ms. Carmi, to setting the contested hearing over? No, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, do you have a proposed uh, date that you would like to reset this contested hearing, Mr. Anderson? Keep in mind, I think the 20th was the date that we said was quite full. The 13th and the 20th are pretty full. 13th and the 20th are pretty full. 
So you can choose either the 6th or the 27th. 27th is closed. <laughs> kidding, kidding, kidding. No, it's not. <laughs> We want we want that three o'clock contested hearing this car. We did try. <laughs> um, so I let me just confirm the twentieth is good still. No, uh, sixth or the twenty seventh. Okay, let's go for the twenty seventh. Um, and uh, if Miss Carmen is available later on, I'm going to give her office a call if I could. Okay, sounds good. So we'll set uh, this infraction or contested hearing. Excuse me, over to the twenty seventh of. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. You can go ahead and log out. Thank you, Your Honor. Yep. All right. I think I'm yeah. going to handle Mr. Calhoun. Try to give him the benefit of the doubt. But it's 45 minutes after the ride was supposed to have him here. Let's see what we got. Let me try calling him and see if I can get him on Zoom. Mm. Mm, uh, I mean, I'm just gonna see what he's what's going on. Yeah, probably best. Somehow he got 144 hours of community service. We have no documentation of that. Okay, sounds good. Are so I don't next? know. Hmm? Are you here next week? Yeah. For some reason I thought you were gone for spring. No, break. I mean we went we went to Arizona on the what the third week in March, just the way that spring training is versus oh, spring yeah. break. So no, we're the weather looks like it's gonna be nice at least. Yeah. Yeah. Are you guys in town or not? Yeah. Uh creek surgery, but oh the sixth, seven. right? Or oh, seventh. Okay. Yeah, right. So, yeah. weren't you going to go somewhere and then we were going to do Sun River, yeah. um, but too many other things. Life happened. Life happened. Yeah. Are you going to end up doing that midweek docket? Um, we, I just emailed them. Um, and, and you said, no, I said, I said, um, I sort of said no. I said yes to morning. That's not no, Jill. That's sort of no. That's <laughs> not for me. No. Baby steps. <laughs> but the morning docket is sh very short. We're gonna get so, you in a. We're gonna get you in a no twelve step program uh, where you so first you have. Close. You're gonna first have to stand up and and when they ask you your name, you're just gonna say no, and then you're just gonna sit back down. That would be a good one. Mm -hmm. That would be a good yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just morning probably like literally like 9 to 10 a.m um quick in long view though yeah i'm so used to that drive it doesn't even phase me anymore yeah just put it on autopilot and go take a nap that's the thing about the cars you just let it do the driving for you no <laughs> way um but yeah but i do have monday tomorrow i have eviction docket and we have 16 cases on and then, and there's been all sorts of weird changes in the law because of the eviction moratorium was seen and the state of emergency ending and the weird way the statute's worded with what that means for when you can now evict. Mm -hmm. There's some like clause about six months after the emergency ending that I'll probably get appealed on. So, you know, stuff like that. And then Monday, I have protection order docket. So you're doing Friday, Friday, Monday, Monday, Tuesday, ITA, but that's short too. That's really quick. So you're doing four, you're doing every day. Yeah. So I guess my civil practice, I'll be doing Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> All right. So we're going to have t-shirts made. <laughs> what are they going to say? I'm all for it. You're just going to say no. Absolutely. And then there's going to be three yes. periods after no, and that's it. Just no. Just no. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's and when you, sense. so what we're also going to have is we're going to have Stephanie to where she is going to have a, I've always said this for sports agents, you know, how athletes are always tweeting stuff out. Yeah. But if I had clients, I would say, okay, how is this going to work? Is anything that you're going to tweet, right. I'm just going to be your filter. Right. So it's going to come to me. Oh, yeah, it's going to come to me first. Exactly. 
And that's what's going to happen. We're just going to reroute that email. And you're going to be the, you're like her no sponsor. You're her no sponsor about how we're learning to say no. Right. And eventually we start to like take the reins off a little bit yeah. and see if she can start saying no on her own. I was going to say, it's probably just going to be forced on me when someone finds me like passed out on my office floor from exhaustion. The, <laughs> so, the, so. the scenario where it's like, you're telling me about a docket on Wednesday that you might have to do. And then when we start talking about it, now you're like, and Friday yeah, and, and Friday. Monday, but those, and but Tuesday. those I knew about before today, Wednesday's the only surprise one. <laughs> So that is what we call that's enabling behavior. Oh, I'm good at it. I'm good at it. Oh man. So we need we need help. We need the intervention. But here's yeah, I mean, this is kind of um the weird way the world is set up that I think like overworking people, it's not it's not good for you. I get that, but it's not viewed, right? People are like, oh man, like get it. Like, yes, you're doing it. But if it was something like substance abuse or, you know, mental health, people are like, you need help for that. Mm -hmm. It's, but it's not that different. I think I you mean, have a support group is what you're in a friendly place right now. <laughs> and I think we're all telling you. Love you. Oh goodness. That, you. that, <laughs> oh, oh, that, man. You need your default position needs to be moving from yes to everything. Right. Because it is yes to everything. No, it's everything. I mean, right now I could show up at your house with three dogs and two exchange students, and you would take I love that. I love that. I oh, yes, that. Matthew is on the phone. Students, he is okay. in orchards on his way here, but he's stuck in some traffic. That's right. Uh, can he pull over? We set him to Thursday of next week, 6th. Tell him to bring his community service documents with him. Okay. I'll leave it at that. And I'm just going to do the set over for next week. Okay. Don't say no to the fun stuff. Don't say no to your friends. Don't start saying no to me for fun things. Yeah. But here's the thing. I really wanted to I did when I saw those Alaskan sled dogs, the retired ones oh, who get to live in health. I've been able to one of those. I'd like to bring that home. Yeah, I'll help you. Carolyn, let's go off the record and just print that form I printed out. I'm curious. If they know from now on, promise. <laughs> I no, they're a lot of work. I should say no to another dog. They're they are a lot of shared custody, especially not living in the country anymore. And I can't do it. My goal the end of this year okay. is to have Jill's default setting be like 60% no. Right now, I would say you're about a 5% no. Yeah. In a 95% yes. Yeah. And the 5% no goes one person. <laughs> so yes. And I know who, yeah, that, I know who that guy is. That's the other problem is why, yeah, I mean, the, yeah. 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 Your Honor, are, are you calling the docket? Or are we waiting for anybody else? We are not. I asked, Carol. I thought we were going off. Hi, Carol. How are you? Hello. Good. Uh, <laughs> How'd we do today, Carol? Everybody did awesome. All right. I to join my no club too, because she's supposed to be enjoying life right now as well. But yeah, not. we have a no support group that we're going to start. <laughs> I want to make t-shirts. I am all for that. Yes. <laughs> okay, if you can take us off Zoom, Carol, I hope you're doing well and holding those grandbabies a lot and everything's well here. And uh, 